Welcome to a tutorial video on BitC8. In this video, we're going to look, this video we're going to look at an example of a teleporting puzzle. We've now seen how we don't really need to place exits and endings, unless we really want to. We can use something called room actions. So we know we can shape how interactions work, what Bitsy calls dialogue, by creating dialogue, the text we see, page breaks, the page between them. We can also do different kinds of lists, and we can use a branching list, as we saw in a previous video, to have the cat teleport us around to different rooms. We don't really need exits. By using the room action exit, we can pick where we want something to teleport us to and then move to that location. So let's create a teleporting puzzle. I'm going to create three different rooms, and we want to end up in one room, but whenever we talk or interact with, that is, the cat, it's going to teleport us somewhere else. So let's look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of different rooms. Up here using the room tool, for example room, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to duplicate it again. So we've got three different rooms. So we're going to start an example room, and we're going to try over here to get to copy two. And we could give them names if it would be helpful. So over here, I'm going to come over to Sprite. Currently looking at cat, and I'm currently looking at the dialog tool. And so what I'm going to add is, let's go ahead and create a list and a branching list. So what I am interested in is we're going to create a, create a branching list such that the cat or teleport us if we have done something. So what we're going to do then is let's drop T into the world. And so if T is equal to one, so we have picked this up. So we have a cat say, I will move you to the next room if we have interacted with the T. Remember, when we interact with an item, we use it up and it becomes part of our inventory. And then what we want right here, so I'm going to click just inside. There we go. Click add. I'm interested in room action. I'm interested in creating an exit. And I click here. Move from example room to room one. Let's put it right in the middle. So 8-8 eight, eight is the middle of a room. right here. Okay. So by collecting the T, we then move to the next room. So let's just go ahead and play this so we can see an action. So as a reminder, we use WASD or the arrow keys to move around. And what we're going to do then is first talk to the cat. It says, I'm a cat, get my T. Now notice the two dialogues ran together. We want to break them up. We're going to need a page break, which I'll add here in just a moment. But let's go ahead and interact with the T. I will move you to the next room. So to fix our current issue, let's go ahead and add a page break. I'll add it up here. Or that is, add it here and then move it back up. So dialogue, add that page break. There we go. Click on page break, move it up. And there we go. So dialogue, oh, page break, branching list. Okay, so room two, example room copy one. This time, let's change up what we're doing. So I'm going to duplicate this cat right here and then place it in the world. And then we're going to pop out its tour here and it's just called Sprite B, which is totally fine. So Sprite B dialogue. Now I'm going to be a little bit mean and I'm going to make this cat choose randomly where it's going to send us. So what I want to do then is I want to create a list, shuffle list. So two different things done in order. So back to room one. So let's go ahead and click in here, click add, room actions, exit, send it back to example room, which is our first room. 
right here and on to the next room and then click just inside there we go and create a room action and an exit this time we are interested in example room copy two and we'll set it right in the middle at eight eight there we go eight eight okay so now when we interact with this cat in the next room, it will randomly pick 50% chance one or the other to either move us back to room one or move us on to the next room, which is where we want to end up. So let's go ahead and play this as is. So first we go talk to our cat. I'm a cat. Get my tea. So let's go ahead and interact with a tea. How about a nice warm cup of tea. I'm a cat. I will move you to the next room. And now we've moved. So now let's see, will this cat move us back or move us forward? Back to room one. Oh no, we're back to room one. Okay, let's go talk to this cat. I'm a cat. I will move you to the next room. Okay, let's go talk to this cat. What happens? Hey, on to the next room. We've moved to the next room. Notice in this very silly example that we're starting to create a puzzle, not a very complicated puzzle, admittedly, but starting to create a puzzle that is dependent on things we do. We picked up tea in one room, we talked to a sprite, or we interacted with a sprite, then using a branching list, it moved us to another room. In this next room, we created a duplicate of the original sprite, changed its dialogue to change its interactions, and now using a shuffle list and the room action exit, we can move the avatar between these different rooms. So as we start to build on these ideas, and particularly in this very silly example, we can start to think, think through things that move us. That is, the avatar can be moved from one room to another based on actions, or put another way, based on interactions it has with sprites and items. We need not necessarily use exits and endings if we don't want to. We can, of course, do it, and they are very useful but we can start to see how all of these interactions can create interesting flows. So we saw when we looked at the cat, for example, I'm a cat, a page break, a branching list, which depends on inventory. We come back over to Sprite B, we see it's got a shuffle list with its own room actions. Let's do one more thing before we come to the end of this video. I'm gonna come over here to item, and for T right here, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And let's go back to the first room. And I'm going to drop this in the world, and I think I'll just change it slightly right here. Okay, so you found a nice warm cup of tea. So let's do something incredibly evil. Right here, room actions. Exit. Remember, we don't have to limit our interactions with only sprites. We can also have interactions, that is change the dialogue events as part of items. So now if we pick up this very weird looking T, we can now immediately get teleported to a completely different room. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Oh. Notice we're over here. So what just happened? So this is the T interaction. Oh, I changed the T interaction right here. Oh, sorry, pop this out. Always make sure you change the correct thing. That was my mistake. Okay, let's come back. Change T. And I'll pop this back out. There we go. Um, delete this. And move over to item two. Pop it out. Now we go. Now we'll create the evil action. Sometimes I get confused too. No worries. So this time we're not even going to say anything. We're just going to immediately teleport. And let's just change it to fourth floor. Right here. Okay. So always make sure you've got the correct item selected. Even, even I make mistakes sometimes. So very evil. Boom. Teleport immediately. Notice this blinked over here in the time that we were looking at it right here. The dialogue tool blinked. So as that kind of silly thing showed, and as I got slightly mixed up by not paying attention to what I was editing, we can create interactions, dialogues for items, as well as sprites. 
Keep in mind though, when we interact with items that are used up, but that does not mean that we can't also extend what we're doing over here in the dialogue tool. They can have dialogues and page breaks and branching lists and all kinds of things. They just will be removed by the end of it. So the difference between sprites, they stick around, items, they disappear, but both of us, allow, but both of them allow us to work with the dialogue tool and creating immediately in this kind of silly extended example, teleporting around to different rooms through cats, through tea, through whatever we want. Now working with room actions as part of extending how we do things within Bitsy. And remember, of course, to edit the correct thing when you're looking at it. Thanks for watching.